Next, I wanted to quickly talk about was this. It's been pretty interesting to see everyone reacting to this on social media. It's been pretty um, encouraging also. So this guy decided to upload a video of somebody enjoying themselves. I think at like a Fuse Marathon, if I'm not mistaken, which is maybe a really interesting and conflicting mix of people when it comes to Fuse, the promoter who's usually doing loads of deep house um, I don't know, melodic, no, it's not really melodic, maybe deep house and tech house type of vibes. And then, you know, fusing it with the, the flipping people that go to fabric or just fabric as an institution overall, especially how it's trying to, you know, go nowadays. It's probably a bit more of a clash than you probably would have wanted. But regardless, this guy says to post a video on Twitter of somebody having a good time and dancing their face off and absolutely going crazy in there and having a great time and just, you know, enjoying themselves as you would do in a nightclub. And the, the, but I think obviously the bad thing of it was the flipping, um, was the tweet itself above the video, which says, yo, I'll never be going to fabric again after seeing this, which is essentially trying to infer that maybe because the guy may look like he's from the queer LGBTQ plus community that, you know, he's not going to go there because he doesn't want to be around, you know, gay people for the most part. I don't know. Or maybe he's just too freaky. I don't know. Whatever the thing is, it's not a nice thing to say about somebody. And I do like the response from Fabric. They clearly saw the video because it's got over 200,000 views. I'm not going to play it because, you know, what's the point? Fabric's response after the guy's tweet was as follows. Great. Given his tweet, we'd prefer it if he didn't come. Our club was built on the values of free expression and freedom to dance and not be judged we also have a no photo policy to protect our dancers sorry privacy please do the right thing and remove the video obviously he hasn't because he's getting a lot of clout with that video and it's got 200,000 views but i do like the response from people in the community who decided to just rip into the guy and essentially you know restore the feeling i feel like in terms of people's understanding in terms of how to behave when it comes to clubs and what nightlife is about and you know the freedom of expression and all that good stuff it's really nice to see Heidi Lorden who I've got a lot of time for big up her she says everyone else that goes to fabric breathes collective sigh of relief there's always weather spoons for you also isn't there no following policy massive evasion of privacy now broadcast publicly I hope he consults a lawyer so everybody's kind of going at him there post human says everyone hating on this dancer in the replies I hope none of you come to my club night stay your towny mainstream night um, last night at home another person there says Heidi someone says here have some respect lads Michael's a legend and we wouldn't have clubs like Fabric if it wasn't for people like him how is this in any way harming you dance somewhere else if you have such babies if you're such babies club culture welcomes everyone and put your phones away and then you know standard kind of replies and then Fabric decided to get involved also and really laid the law down and said as follows yesterday we made it aware that the club the, the tweet was circulating featuring a video of a dance at the club we have requested that due to the nature of the caption and the context in which it was taken that the video was removed the authors would be given a lifetime ban crazy we have a no photo policy to protect the club's privacy everyone who should be express themselves freely at fabric which is great to see right awesome 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 to see but the interesting part for me is that this kind of illustrates the struggle that london or the uk is always going to have when we try to implement these kind of like you know berlin-esque um policies around no photos on the dance floor and people just enjoying themselves because i just feel like we just not a well-behaved country nightlife wise we may be culturally maybe a little bit behind some other places in terms of really fully accepting people um expressing themselves exactly how they want to be which is why we maybe have such an abundance of these alternative queer flinter lgbtq plus nights popping up all over the place because those people don't essentially feel seen or protected or safe in these mainstream quote-unquote clubs so they go into these different places or setting up their own events or throwing their own parties whatever it may be called but there is a effort being made especially fabric to try to rewrite the wrongs and to try to set a new precedent and to try to invite and welcome more people into the space so it is a little bit more representative of what the club scene actually is like because there was a time before where fabric was very lads heavy was very minimal heavy was very like everyone basically looked like a carbon copy of raresh if you know who that dj is right in terms of their look and what they were into the girls had a particular look about them but it was a particular kind of aesthetic that kind of went in there overall i remember one time in there i was there a few maybe months ago you know you see people that you know look like essentially they only go out just to get fucked up no one's really going there for the music everyone's just going there to go dance 
and basically go and take illicit materials and drink whatever they need to take. But over time, I felt like, especially within the last 18 months, the programming at Fabric has been incredible. They've clearly tried to come out of their comfort zone and for me the most definiting factor because i was one of the people that hated going there especially when it came to the searches because i remember going to fabric back in the day when you used to have dogs there right sniffer dogs in fucking fabric crazy times but i remember the searches being horrendous they always will be vibe killer even though they've improved them in terms of streamlining them so it doesn't feel too much like a hassle it still is a little bit of a vibe killer but you know all clubs basically do the same thing without maybe the addition of the pictures and all this other stuff but the one thing they've done which i feel like has made the biggest difference in my opinion in terms of changing their fortunes around aside from the you know opening the doors to more alternative promoters and different djs and you know the whole resident dj thing has been opened up a bit more to different various type of people in terms of what they look like and ages and whatnot blah 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 the most important thing for me has been the no photos policy legit still you'll see on some weekends if you click on the hashtag or you go on fabric on a week you'll see some people uploading pictures but for the most part if you're actually in there the vibe is so much better without people taking pictures and phone whatever maybe because fabric is also known as a place where you know if you want to take a video or a picture it's pretty well specked out in a way your videos would look amazing from the lighting the smoke the sound insulation how dark it is it looks incredible when you actually take in your smartphone but the fact that they've implemented that rule the fact that before you go in they ask you to put a sticker on your phone or i think they put it on for you actually before you go in so it's actually enforced it does go a long way to improving the vibe in there because people legitimately don't feel like they're being seen or that they're being watched at all times and they do enjoy themselves and respect themselves a bit more freely than they would do in, in days gone by now this fuse event's a bit weird because like i said fuse is a bit of a laddie type of event um you know it's very tech house based and a lot of those guys i wouldn't ex assume would be that comfortable seeing somebody you know as the guy is there in the video scantily clad dancing and doing his thing and enjoying himself they naturally wouldn't you know get it in the same way but i do like the response that regardless if it was fuse or whatever it may be they have a particular way that they want their club to be and they want people to abide by the rules and if you don't then you know you get the lifetime ban which has been great to see but it does represent a little bit of a it does kind of illustrate the struggles of london nightlife in terms of i won't say educating but in terms of um getting people to agree to those type of things is very difficult or people to even to get it like you know the no photo policy thing is becoming a big deal here in london which is shouldn't really be but then imagine if we decide to implement stuff like door picking which some events do, especially the ones that are involved in the queer, LGBTQ and Flinter community, they definitely do door picking. And they're, and I've seen it before where they'll turn some people away, which is pretty funny to see because it never happens in London. And people are always shocked, like, what? I've got money though, right? Because, you know, in other places, it doesn't matter if you've got money, you just aren't going to come in. But imagine how much of a fuss people would kick up if they decided to introduce door picking in London. It would be absolutely crazy, especially with all our, you know, issues that we already have, especially in central London clubs with you know people not there not being the most friendliest when it comes to people you know that look like me over there imagine that gets extended into like our bit of the community where they're starting to like say nah you can't come in because you know mm -hmm. and then you can't come where you draw the line in that regard but this shows the struggle that's happening at the moment and how to kind of make it work but the response of everybody's been encouraging everyone basically chastised the guy ripped into him and you know he didn't mind it because i'm sure he doesn't really give a fuck and probably isn't going to go back to fabric anytime soon because he probably went there only for fuse but still I love the fact that Fabric took that stance and decided to go like that. And I also like the fact that everyone kind of responded the way they did because it basically showed that there is a shift happening over there. And it's not just a dreary old you know horrible tense vibe killer place that it was in the past it's definitely freshened up a little bit it feels nicer room two is you know maybe one of the best rooms in london in terms of a club space i've ever been in the acoustics in there are absolutely incredible the staff in there are usually brilliant they always have good people booking there it's maybe a bit of a mission for me to go and i hate the stairs and all that malarkey and the fucking cloak room being where it is and all that stuff but apart from that it's still one of our best clubs we have in london and the fact that they're trying to drag it kicking and screaming into the 21st century has been amazing to see to be honest because it clearly shows that it's difficult to do but it is it can be done so bigger fabric for doing what they did and hopefully that is a lesson to all people that hey when you're on the dance floor enjoy yourself put your phone in your pocket and just have a good time so the no photo policy thing can be annoying i understand for some people because you know it's my phone i can do what i want i get it but please honestly you will enjoy yourself far better if you just put your phone in your pocket and you actually go and enjoy yourself for the most part i don't know what people do when they go to gigs but when i go to a gig like to watch a band or an artist perform 
for the most part i may take like max three pictures maybe something oh here i am my favorite song or me singing along and then for the most part you actually want to enjoy the show just stand there and recording it on your phone watching it through your phone's a bit boring same thing goes for a nightclub you're gonna go out there even if you are gonna go and just drink a lot and take loads of drugs maybe focus on that more than actually your phone because it kind of takes you out the moment in my opinion personally and plus especially in places like you know fabric they've got the 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 flipping um, the set list or who's gonna play or whatnot printed on the on the things so you don't even need to take your phone out got all that printed you can just check it at a glance and see who's coming on next and whatnot got comfortable seats you can sit down on free water everywhere a good little smoking room you can go to also a smoking area sorry it's like it's a decent place to hang out and just enjoy the music i don't know if people want to be on their phone all the time and there's always kind of really weird strange mix of people because it's it's in a weird strange place as well it's kind of central kind of isn't so there's a weird really strange confluence of people that always kind of cross in there so it's pretty interesting to have conversations with some mum or some guy that's a finance guy or some dude that's a flipping you know that's a student just hanging out whatever it may be that's always pretty interesting but hey what do i know what do i know